Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. This is the third video in the series of practice problems to prepare for the trades math assessment. I'll put a link to this test in the description. I'd highly recommend you print out that test and do the very best you can. This is a no calculator test. I'll show you some tips and tricks to work your way through here. And there are two videos before this in this series about 20 problems in the first video and about 20 problems in the second video. And I'll do a few more in here and then I'll also do a fourth video to wrap it up. Uh, the key to doing well on these tests is really to prepare yourself. And the best way to prepare is to do a lot of practice math exams. They're all pretty much the same. So the more you do, the better you get at them. There's always a little bit of a tip or trick, especially when there's no calculator. So go ahead and print out that exam. Do maybe five of the problems and watch how I do them. Uh, and see how you're going. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Number 39, right? 0.52 is a fraction. Well, this is the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. So that is 52 one hundredths as a fraction. And then you always reduce it. First thing you want to do is see if two will go into both of those numbers. So two will go into there 26 times and into there 50 times. I'm going to try that again. They're both even, so they'll both reduce again. Two will go into there. 13 times into there, 25. That's a prime number. Can't be reduced any more than that. Number 40, the nightly price for a standard room at a hotel is 119.95 with a nightly room tax of 17.95. The hotel charges 90 cents per phone call made from the phone in the room if a guest stays five nights and makes four phone calls, how much is the total bill? Well, I'm gonna add this together right here to get the cost per night. Five and five is zero, or 10 carry the one, 18, 19, carry the one, 17, carry the one, three. So it's 137.90 per night times the five nights. And then four phone calls at 90 cents will be $3.60, right? Nine times four, 36, and I got two decimal places. So this is the total price of phone calls, and then this times five will be the cost of the hotel room. I don't know if there's an easy way to do it or just do the multiplication out. 137.90 times the five nights, five times zero, five times nine, 45, carry the four, five times seven, 35, plus the four, 39, carry the three, 15 and three, 18, carry the one, five plus one, six, 689, 50, five nights, that's about right. And then I got to add the $3 and 60 cents and my phone charges to it. I'm gonna add, I'm adding straight down. Five and six is 11, carry the one, 10, 13, Carry the one, eight and one is nine and six. And then the decimal place in addition comes straight down. In multiplication, I keep track of how many places over the decimal is, and then I count over. So I'm over one, two, I'm over one, two. And then adding, it comes straight down. So that's the total price for the hotel. Okay, number 41. Conrad earned quiz grades at 18, 24, 14, and 18. What's his average? So I got to add those together. Um, just a quick look here. I have four values, 18 and 12, that's 30. That's going to add together nicely. And then 14 and 18 is 20, 32. So all of them add up to 62. There are four grades. So I do four into 62 to get the average. So it's the sum of all the values divided by the number of values. Four goes into six one time. Six minus four is two. Four into 22, it'll only go in there five times. So it give me 20. Two minus zero is two. So I have 15 and two fourths. And that could be reduced to 15 and a half. Number 42, solve the proportion. Best way to solve proportions is cross multiply. This times this is equal to that times that. So I have 1.68 is equal to 4 times 4.6. I'll do that over here. 4.6 times 4, 24, carry the 2, 
16, 17, 18. A decimal place is over one spot, so it's going to be 18.4. So I have 1.68 equals 18.4. Trying to get H by itself, I divide both sides by 1.6. So I got to do 18.4 divided by 1.6. When I do these division of decimals, I'm going to move this over one place and this over one place to put the decimal here. Now I have 16 into 18 once, 24, 16 goes into 24 once, give me 16 with 8 left over. This is a remainder of 8 over 16, so this is 11 and 8 sixteenths, or 11.5. So the answer is 11.5, answer B right there. Number 43, a nine-foot pole casts a shadow six feet long. So this casting a shadow, sun's up here, casting a shadow down six feet long. How long will a shadow be for a 27-foot pole? So now I have a 27-foot pole. How long is that shadow? They're going to be similar triangles because they're the same angles. They're not going to have the same length. That would be congruent triangles, but the same angles would make them similar. So 9 times 3 is 27. So 6 times 3 is 18. So 9 is to 6 is 27 is to 18. So the correct answer here is B. Number 44, 25, no, 24 out of 100 Americans over the age of 12 smoke. How many smokers would you expect in a group of 650 over the age of 12? So that's really, those numbers aren't going to come into it. I just want 24 one hundredths, or 24% of 650. Let me check these answers and see if I could just figure out, a, you know, it's about a quarter, but they're all pretty close to about a quarter, so I'm going to have to do the math. I won't be able to just eliminate answers that don't make sense. So I'm going to do 650 times the decimal equivalent of that, 0 0.24, 4 times 0, 4 times 5, 20, Carry the 2, 24, 26. Placeholder, 2 times 0, 2 times 5, 10. Carry the 1, 12, 13. I'm going to add that up to get 0, 0, 6, 5, 1. 1, 2 decimal places, 1, 2 decimal places, so 156. There's the answer right there, answer C. Okay, number 45, a carpenter makes a schematic drawing of a deck. This is the schematic. On the drawing, it represents four inches is five feet, right? So this is eight inches. So I'm going to do eight inches divided by the four inches to get two. And I'm going to do that two times the five feet. One task mark is feet. So two times five feet, this is going to be ten feet. Then down here on Z, it's 11 inches. I'll do 11 inches divided by the 4 feet, or 4 inches. It's going to go in there 2 and 3 quarters. And then 2 and 3 quarter 4 inch increments times the 5 feet is going to give me 10. And then 3 quarters times 5. 3 quarters times 5 is going to be 15 fourths. 4 will go in, right? 5 times 3 is 15. And then the 4 in the denominator. 4 is going to go in at 15 3 times. So I'm going to do that 3 plus the 10. That's going to give me 12 and 3 fourths. So this is going to be 13 and 3 quarters of a foot. And lastly, I have that 9.7 inches. So 9.7 divided by the 4 inches, so I have 9.7 inches, divided by the 4 inches, it's going to go in there 2 times, that's going to give me 8, with 1.7 fourths left over. And then I'm going to multiply this by the 5 feet, so 2 times 5 feet is 10 feet, then 1.7 over 4 times the 5 feet, um, it's going to give me 5, 8.5 over 4. 4 will go into there 2 times. 
leaving me with 0.5. And then I have that 2.5 feet and that 10 feet to get 12.5 feet. Okay, number 46, convert these numbers into decimal fractions percent. This is given to you already as a decimal. This is given to you as a fraction, and then this is given to you as a percent. So the way I remember my percents, if I have 0.8 as a percent, this is like an arrow shooting it over two places so it goes over one, two. So the decimal of that is 0 0.008. So this is 0 0.008. And then this is my tens place, my hundreds and my thousands place. So the fraction would be eight one thousandths. And then I got to reduce that. I'm going to just start with cutting it in half. So four over 500, still both even. Cut them in half, two over 250. That, oh, and then that's going to give me one over 125. So that fraction is one over 125. Part B is a fraction that's given to me as a fraction. So I'm kind of doing the reverse of that. If I have three fifths, I want a 10 on the bottom. So I'm going to multiply it by a 2 over 2 to give me 6 tenths. Now that I have it over 10, it's easy to convert into a decimal. That's going to be 0 0.6. And then I want to take that 0 0.6, convert it into a percent. Just like I went over 1, 2, I'm going to go over 1, 2 to get 60%. So this is 60%. 3 is a whole number. So as a fraction, that would just be 3 over 1. And as a percent, same thing, three, I got to go over one, two, and that would be 300%. Three quarters, maybe I recognize that as 0.75. And then as a percent, 75%. Part E, 0.24. To go over this way to a decimal, one, two, would be 24%. As a fraction, it would be 24 one hundredths. This is my tenths place, my hundredths place. They're both even. I'll cut them in half to get 12 fiftieths. I'll cut those in half to get 6 over 25. 6 is only divisible by 3. 25 is not, so that's reduced. So that's 6 25ths. 65%, I'm going to go over 1, 2, 0. 0.65. Then as a fraction, a little bit out of room here, I got 65 one hundredths. Both these numbers here are divisible by 5. 5 will go into there. A 50 would be 10, 13 times. And into there, 20 times. So that would be 13 twentieths as a reduced fraction. All right, moving right along. Number 47. 32 is 80% of what number? So the answer is actually 32. It's a little tricky. So you're saying what number? Oops. So number 47, um, moving right along, number 47 here, 32 is 80% of what number? So that means 32 is actually my answer. So what I'm saying is 80%, I'll convert that to a decimal, 80% of what number is 32? It's a little bit of a tricky one. So the number has to be bigger than 32. I divide both sides by 0.8. It'll give me x by itself. Divide this side by 0.8. So I have 32 divided by 0.8. I'm going to move that decimal over once, over here once. 8 goes into 32 four times, 40. So 40 times 80% is 32. 40% of 60.2 is what number? Again, I'll turn that into a decimal, 0.4. Then I'm going to do 60.2 times 0.4 to get 8, 0, 24. My decimal is over 1, 2, so I have 24.8. So 40% of 60.2 is what number? 24.08. So that's going to be answer A. 45 is what percent of 600? So 45 is what percent of 600? So let's see um, if we could get rid of any of these. 750% doesn't make any difference or make any sense. 
It's also not going to be that really small one. 75% would be like three quarters, so it would be closer to, you know, like 400 or so. So that doesn't make any sense. So the only one that will really work is that one right there, 7.5%. That kind of makes sense because 10% of 600 would be 60, right? So 45 is a little bit less than that, so less than 10%, so 7.5%. So you don't have to multiply that one all the way out. Okay, number 50 here. I think I'm going to wrap it up at the end of number 50 here. Uh, the last section is geometry and measurement. That's actually kind of my favorite stuff, measurement and geometry, but I'll put that off for the fourth video. Again, there are links in the description for the first few videos. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Um, and let's go ahead and do number 50. Arlene deposited $1,500 in an account that pays 7.5% interest for four years. Um, since it's simple interest, I'm going to take that 7.5 and multiply it by that 4. Multiplying by 4 is pretty easy because I double it to get 15. Double it again to get 30. So I got 30%. I'm going to take that 30%, multiply it by $1,500. Right? 30% is 0.3. That's going to be 0, 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 plus 145, that's going to be one decimal place over here, so one over here, so $450 in interest. So that's going to be answer D. 450 plus 1,500 gives me the 1,950. So simple interest versus compound interest. Compound interest is where you want earn interest on the interest, and that gets a little more complicated. So a key giveaway here is that it's simple interest. All right, again, please comment below if you're taking a trades exam and if these videos helped and maybe some of the tips and tricks that you have put in the comments below. I appreciate you watching.